Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be comparing my wife's Land Rover Defender to my Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. Now, before you tell me this comparison doesn't make sense because I should use the V8 Defender for this comparison, well, first off, I'm going to tell you you're wrong because both of these vehicles, as equipped, sticker for almost the same amount of money. And so this is actually more comparable than if I did a V8 Defender, because if I did a V8 Defender, then we'd be looking at a price difference of like $40,000, which I understand some people might be cross shopping vehicles that are $40,000 apart, but typically not. Anyways, before we get into this comparison, as always, if you're gonna save time and money, the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get right into it. Under the hood of the Defender, we have a turbocharged 3.0-liter inline-six that goes through an 8-speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 395 horsepower and then 406 pound-feet of torque, and so far my wife has been averaging just over 15 miles per gallon. Now under the hood of the Wrangler, we have a Nachi aspirated 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that also goes through an 8-speed automatic transmission. Power outputs, however, are quite a bit more, 470 horsepower and then 470 pound-feet of torque, and I also average about 15 miles per gallon. Now, before we go over the front ends, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Starting off with the Defender, it definitely has a boxy, aggressive off-roader appearance, which might make you think that this is a truck-like SUV, and it's actually not. It's unibody, and it has independent front and rear suspension, so this is more like a Toyota RAV4 than it is like something like a Toyota Tacoma <laughs> example. But anyways, when it comes to style, I think they nailed it. Um, mine has the Explorer pack, so it has this decal on the hood. It also has the snorkel there on the front end. And then you guys can see, I also have the paint protection film from the factory, which I recommend you get because it is expensive. It's over $4,000, but it's definitely worth it so that you don't have to worry about paint chips or anything like that. Um, but the last thing I want to mention is ground clearance with the Defender is 11 and a half inches if you have it in the highest ride height setting with the air suspension. Now with the Wrangler, this one is more of a hit truck SUV because, well, it's body on frame and it has a solid front and rear axle. So this one is more of like an old school true off-roader, if you want to call it that. Anyways, you guys can see we've got the cool hydro guide there in the center and then we just have the jeep wranglers normal look that it's had for decades at this point we've got a steel bumper here on the front end which helps out with approach angle and just makes it look so cool ground clearance with this is 12.9 inches all the time because well it has fixed suspension now, popping on the side here, a tire and wheel setup could not be more different. With the Defender, we have 19-inch wheels. If you're wondering, the setup is 255, 65, 19 in the front and over in the rear. So, not exactly the best off-road setup, whereas the Wrangler has 17-inch wheels and it has 35s wrapped around them. And so... <laughs> yeah, definitely set up for off-roading. Now, this has the Extreme Recon package, so it's actually lifted from the factory. That's the other reason why it has so much ground clearance. Um, whereas this Defender, again, has the air suspension package. So again, that helps it with increasing the ground clearance. Notice with the different style of fender flares, like the Wrangler, you can see it's this huge piece, whereas the Defender, it's just this, you know, little black thing there on the side. I do love the venting here on the side of the Defender. And then also look at the shape of the mirrors. They're actually very similar with both the vehicles. And then you can see with the roofs of both the vehicles, again, since they're both boxy SUVs, again, very similar with like the windshield slope everything is super similar obviously there's nothing there at the top of the wrangler and then again i have the explorer pack so i've got that rack there at the top of the defender and then the storage box there on the side now here's a quick look at the side view of the defender here's a quick look at the side view of the wrangler now when it comes to key fobs i think the jeep's key fob might be a little bit cooler because it's a little bit more special like it's unique to the wrangler and the gladiator but i will say the defender key fob definitely feels a lot more premium and looks more premium as well now, popping into the cargo area of the Wrangler, and notice it has Kilo Century, we have to open up the bottom portion first, and then the top portion second. And the Wrangler is actually pretty spacious, pretty practical from a cargo perspective. And it's cool that you can actually see the whole roll cage if you take the top off. And so I'd say practicality is great, um, but doing this whole window slash tailgate thing, <laughs> not exactly the most fun. Now with the Defender, just like the G-Wagon, it opens up all in one motion. It's a lot easier to open, but also the spare tire is a lot smaller than the Wrangler, so it's a lot lighter. And I guess that my wife has stuff from 
Amazon back here, go figure. Um, storage space back here is actually pretty similar. Obviously there's no roll cage or anything like this in the back, um, but from a practicality standpoint, they're very close. And then finishing things up with the rears of the vehicles, I feel like Jeep has a little bit of a better design on the Wrangler compared to what Land Rover has with the Defender. And I think it just comes down to the body lines here in the back. So you guys can see that all the body lines back here kind of match the overall form of the Jeep. Whereas with the Defender, you guys can see it does have some sharp lines, but for the most part, it's kind of more rounded off on the front and it's boxy, but more of like a rounded off boxy. And then the back end is just like, vertical it's super strange looking it's like the defender just ends i know some people might love that because again it looks like the old defender but i don't know i kind of prefer this where it's just more of like a gradual end to it um, but i will say the jeep also ends with the uh, exhaust game you guys will hear that a little bit later in, in inline six sounds good but an inline six can't beat a v8 and then popping to the back of the Wrangler, you guys can see here with all of the trim. I think it looks nice. Um, obviously definitely a lot more simplistic. I mean, this is coming from a much less expensive vehicle because you can get this in a regular Rubicon. Room back here is pretty good. Got some vents back here, window controls. Headroom's great because it's boxy SUV. Also, we got this little storage space uh, back here. And now comparing with the Defender, you guys can see it still has a utilitarian design like the Jeep, but much nicer material use. And then that continues on to the seats as well with the leather. And popping in, there is way more room here in the passenger area. Still got vents and all that fun stuff. And then also we get the skylights here at the top. Um, so this is like a much more like passenger friendly cabin. And then popping to the front of the Wrangler, you guys can see again, door panels can be pretty sparse because well, you can take off the doors. And then you got the blind spot ring with the mirrors. And then here's the front seat. I feel like Jeep should have done a better job with the interior on this because again, the Rubicon 392 is quite a bit more expensive. But man, does that sound good. Um, with the steering wheel, I think they did a great job. It's like perforated here on the side. You got the paddle shifters there on the back. This comes to practical stuff like adaptive cruise control. I think the gauge cluster is really cool looking as well, even though it's mostly analog. Uh, I, just, I, th I think they did a good job with that. And the thing that I love is the camera system with this. It's not super complex, but like, it's not a big vehicle, and so having both cameras is great. Infotainment system's easy, easy to use. You've got dual zone climate. Um, you got heated seats, heated steering wheel as well. You can make the exhaust quiet if you want. And then with the off-road tech, it's got front and rear lockers. It has a sway bar disconnect. And then with the four-wheel drive system, it's in four-wheel auto all the time. You got four-wheel high part time, neutral, and then four-wheel low. And then here's that shifter. You have auxiliary switches right there, or buttons rather. And then you guys can see the whole center console area and then of course you got a grab handle here in the center and then i love the gray trim there and then being a wrangler you can obviously take the top off so these are pretty easy to get you just have the latches and then with the back you do have to use tools and then popping over to the defender you guys can see that really nice material use continues and then we still have blind spot ring in the mirrors you guys can see like all the window controls memory seat functionality and then here are the seats and something I should have mentioned, the Defender has power seats, whereas the Wrangler, it obviously had manual seats. And then popping in, the door definitely sounds like a lot sturdier because you can't take it off. Also, this is in my wife's position, so <laughs> we're going we're gonna to set this uh, to my position. Um, something I'm going to mention is with the memory seats, you can use it while driving. You just have to hold down the button. Anyways, uh, with the steering wheel... Uh, I'm kind of mixed on the Defender steering wheel. I think it looks really cool, but I do prefer the feel of the Wrangler steering wheel just a little bit more. And then we got this cool digital gauge cluster, which you can scroll through a bunch of different menus. You can make it have a nav view as well. And then with the camera system, it's a full 360 camera system. It also fills in underneath the Defender um, as you're moving. And so definitely a more advanced camera system compared to the Wrangler. Now, sadly, we were not able to get the larger infotainment system. That's what we wanted, the kind of like slightly bigger screen. Uh, but this still functions the same. Um, it shows you a bunch of cool stuff, uh, like shows you elevation and everything. Um, overall, it's, it's frankly very easy to use. And then we have our whole control stack here. Now I want to mention luxury features. We have not only heated, but we have cooled seats, dual zone climate. You got the air suspension control here, hill descent control. Um, we've got a low range. Now with the Defender, uh, in terms of off-road tech, it does have a center and a rear locking differential, but it's all automatic. So like with the Wrangler, you select it with the Defender, it selects everything for you. And then this has some other fancy features like a refrigerator here in the center console, wireless phone charging pad, ring that doesn't have that. And again, the material use is just 
very nice here in the Defender. And then obviously full panoramic center if we can't take off the roof, but I mean, I feel like it feels very open because of all of the like, I don't know, glass there at the top. Now in terms of sticker price, this Wrangler originally stickered for about $86,000, whereas this Defender originally stickered for $85,000. Now the Defender also has the Explorer pack, which also tax on like another $5,000. But if you spec out a 2023 Rubicon 392, which this Defender is a 23, then you're looking at over $90,000. So like option to option, model year to model year, they're gonna be the same price. Setting off here in the Wrangler first off, and I actually have to lean back the seat a little bit more to give you guys a better view. Um, but one thing I want to mention about the Wrangler, obviously I've lived with this for about a year at this point, 4,500 miles, is this car is really fun to drive off-road. It's really fun to drive occasionally. It's not so fun to daily drive. Uh, lots of wind noise, obviously, because it's a big block of cheese, um, but it's not a super well-insulated big block of cheese because, well, you can take half the vehicle apart. So obviously, Jeep's not going, like, Jeep has limitations with this, and I understand those limitations. So I think this is, like, ultimately a great uh, toy, and you can daily drive it if you want, but yeah, it's it gets it gets punishing after a while. That never gets old though. I mean, it sounds so crazy and it literally rattles the top. Like the exhaust is so loud <laughs> that it rattles the top. And the manual mode is so fun. Cause you can do this. <laughs> you can get it to like pop out the back. So, you know, for this little short driving portion, uh, again, just talking as an owner of this vehicle, I love how this thing drives. I think it's great. I just don't think it's the greatest daily driver ever, which I mean, it makes sense. It's a Wrangler. Um, and so I, I guess like, I think this is a better second vehicle rather than a main vehicle. And it's and it's, a, it's an expensive second vehicle, right? I mean, again, mine's tickered for 86,000. A brand new one is like just over $90,000. And so I, I just, I would go into it with kind of like that uh, understanding. Like you'll have fun, like I was talking to a friend that just recently sold his Wrangler and I was like, hey, did you kind of get the same thing as I have with the Wrangler where I loved it initially, but now I kind of like, <laughs> I, I still love it, but like I kind of hate parts of it. And he's like, yeah. He's like, it's great for like the first, you know, three, four months. And then you're sick of the top rattling and you're sick of the road noise and the ride quality and just the weird Jeep things that you have to deal with. Um, like with me, this the power steering just randomly overheats. I don't know why. Like it says that it, it gives me a warning like every so often. Um, so other than that, other than the weird stuff, I still like I still love it. It's it's a weird um, it's a weird love hate relationship. But maybe that's why Wranglers are so popular because it's like I don't know. It's it's kind of addicting. Um, anyways, let's go jump into the Defender. setting off in the Defender and let me tell you this drives so different from the Wrangler. The Wrangler right is this like loud visceral like fun almost like sports car type experience but it's an SUV obviously <laughs> whereas this it's a full luxury car. Now it is a boxy SUV and with the snorkel and I have the ladder on the side the box on the other side and the roof rack you do get more wind noise than a regular Defender but if you're in the Defender without any of the kit that I have on it it's Again, you do get more wind noise in a regular vehicle, but it's actually relatively uh, quiet, way quieter than the Wrangler. I mean, it's completely uh, different vehicles when it comes to that. And then other stuff, the seats are more comfortable in the Defender. Uh, the ride quality is also better. Now, the Wrangler is better over like big bumps because it's got a lot of travel, so it can its suspension can handle the compression and also, it's slower than the Wrangler. <laughs> I should have gotten a better acceleration for you guys, but like I, I think you guys know. I guess I'll go down here so we can get a better one. Um, but anyways, it's it's really good like on smooth pavement like this, and then over little bumps. But it's it's the really big bumps where the Wrangler, you know, again because it has way more travel, because it has 35, so we'll be able to handle those a little bit better. Now you guys can hopefully hear the little bit of wind buffeting here on camera. 
Um, again, that's because, oh, this will be perfect. I'll just use this for the acceleration. Uh, again, that's because of the rack on the top, the snorkel and all that. Um, now some other stuff, this is just like, it's just a better daily driver in every single aspect. I feel like it's more usable. Um, I actually prefer this infotainment system to Jeeps, even though it's kind of like small looking, it's super usable and super user friendly. It's cool, you can hear you can hear the air getting taken in through the snorkel. That's so cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's quick enough. I, I don't feel like, obviously driving them back to back, like this kind of feels sluggish, right? Because the Wrangler's like immediate response with that 6.4 liter V8, right? Has so much displacement. This takes a second for the turbos to spool up and all that. But when you just drive this in a vacuum, it feels so quick. It feels so responsive. It's, it's more than enough. And um, then the other thing is on-road handling is way better with this. Again, it's unibody, it's got independent suspension, so it just handles a lot better. And so to sum things up, you know, if I were to spend, you know, what these cars cost, let's just say mid $80,000 range, and I could only buy one of them, I know a lot of you are gonna hate me for the saying this, but I would go with the Defender. Um, after owning both of them, and you know, <laughs> I'm gonna have make a video with my wife uh, pretty soon to let you guys know her opinion, but like, after hearing what she has to say about the Defender and everything, it's just a much more well-rounded vehicle. It is a luxury car, so it does all the luxury car stuff. And it still has like a cool utilitarian interior, but then like it's got nice touch points, which I think just, I don't know, amplify everything. And then it's very capable off-road. Um, I have done some minor off-roading with it. I'm gonna plan, I'm planning on doing more in the future, but like this is capable enough for what 99% of people do off-road, frankly. And for me, as an off-road enthusiast, as someone who has a Wrangler with 35s, like I still feel like this is more than enough for me. Like I, I take this out and it feels so capable. And so it just, it seems like it's a much more well-rounded vehicle. So if you're gonna have one vehicle, I think the Defender is the one to go for. But if you are wealthy enough that you can have multiple vehicles, I think the Wrangler feels way more special. This, because it does so many things, it's not exactly like the best in anything. Like it's not the best luxury car. It's not the best off-roader, right? But it combines both of them and so it does really well. Whereas the Wrangler is amazing at being a fun off-road V8 powered toy.